actually my first semester of college was actually at UW Madison and all of their frat parties, they only have old Milwaukee. That's the only kind of beer they ever have. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, back the truck. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Wait. You were a badger. <laughs> back to Thunderdome for yet another hey everyone who hashtag vote Dozier we did that we're responsible for that woohoo edition of Anibus Die Minnesota Sports Talk Kenda uh, I'm your not so humble host co-host and at Andy Carlson show on the Twitter machine riding shotgun my partner in crime a woman who would be the next Food Network star if it wasn't for all the swearing and rampant am- anti-semitism at Murphy <laughs> Emin Oh, hey, wow. How's it going? You know, I, I was okay with the the um, language issue, but come on now. Stop it. You right cannot now. confirm nor deny. Whatever. We're on the Twitter at Andy Must Die. The website is andymustdie.com. And this is episode 21, so we're, we're, we're legal to have an adult beverage or six. It's exciting. <laughs> and people who listen probably do that while they listen especially last week's which was extremely very random La- and... last week's was the best <laughs> i almost felt like i should have apologized i'm like yeah i'm sorry it was just really it's a low sports time it's kind of you know rough around the edges you know got a lot going on so we just kind of make shit up as we go along well it, it's kind of like what uh common man does every day yeah but i don't like him i actually do like him though you know, I actually don't even listen to that network at all anymore. Oh. Now, why is that departure? All right, so you're on the road on a football Sunday for God knows what reason. You can't watch the Vikings on TV. You're not listening to KFN? That would be the only time that I would listen. And you hear your best friend, PA? We are besties. And we sure are. Versich is a cool-ass dude, though. <clears throat> I love him. I actually really, really... Because he tells it like it is. I mean, he's not... His PA is such an ad, uh, rear end kissing Homer, you know, and then you got Wobby who's like, really? I mean, I get it. He's paid by the Vikings. I understand it's your job, but yeah, I, that's why I like Pete because he's, uh, he's keeps it real. Well, and by the way, we didn't vote Dozier in just so you know, but the I, reason he got in is because oh, yeah, yeah. somebody else got hurt. Yeah. But, but, I mean, but I won well, the votes put him on high up on the list for replacements. Right. It, uh, and of course, but you know, I'm just saying. And someone was like, oh, you know, I feel so bad we let him down. And I'm like, you know, now he knows how we feel, like, for many, many seasons. Well, it's it's a social media phenomenon where I, I get it. It's fun for what it's intended to do. But subconsciously, people are thinking, it's like, hey, I, I can change the world by putting out a hashtag. And I did it. And it just goes all, all the way back to, like, uh, people's sense of self-worth now in that they're they can affect things more than they actually really can and oh it always comes back to parenting now it always comes back to the dad mode podcast uh really some monday was a friday three times a week uh today's episode was helicopter parents but this oh, all ties god this all ties in because this generation of 20 to 30 year olds uh like slightly younger than me or in the same range as me, it would be, they're the first generation of parents who helicoptered and 
be like, little Johnny can do whatever he wants. And the, the, the person, the parents who always let the kid win at the card game or the sports or the video game or whatever. So this kid has this self important sense of himself and say, ah, I'm the best person in the world. And they're the person putting the hashtag vote Dozier tweet out thinking, yeah, I did that. I'm a good person. They're also, uh, uh, it always comes back to the hashtag, uh, bring back our girls too. Because they probably oh, think that they solved yeah. that, even though it's completely yeah. unresolved. We, but we talked about that, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, and the helicopter parenting thing is so ridiculous because it's like at my school. So, for example, you know, the parents want to walk their children to the class. It's like, no, we made it a rule. You, you drop your kids off in the ho- you know, in the main office at the, you know, in the lobby. They go to class by themselves. I mean, obviously, the first day or two with kindergarten, it's you know, a thing, but it's like, no, little Johnny can actually walk the 30 feet to get to his classroom all by himself, you know, and it's just, it's, it's crazy. And the, the main theme of the episode was, is that uh, 95% of my rough math uh, of the parents who are helicopter parents are, who do hover over th- everything the kids do, don't do it maliciously. They actually do it because they love their kids so much and they want the best for them and they want to watch over them, make sure no harm ever comes to little Aiden, Jaden, or Kate. But, but uh, all it there, does there is are, render, oh, it yeah. renders those kids completely unable to deal with life. I mean, Inert was the word that it was like, kept coming up. Really? You know, it's just, I see kids that can't, it, uh, the second something isn't going their way, they just completely melt down because they have never had to deal with it. I mean, I remember telling, and I think we talked about this on the on the Dad Mode podcast when I was on, but I remember telling one of my girlfriends, I'm like, I routinely beat my kids at games. Because <laughs> oh, they need on. to learn. Uh, I'm going to cut that up for the intro. <laughs> You're going to say, I routinely beat my kids. I routinely beat my kids. <laughs> you are such an ass. Bam, down, down, bam, bam. Sorry, proceed. <laughs> yeah, i got to watch what I say with you. Um, but, I mean, they need to learn how to lose. They need to learn what it's like when things don't always go your way. Yes. It, it, al- so. it always comes back to the everyone gets a trophy day and how bullcrap that is because I, I get participation. Everyone gets equal time because it's about learning the game up to a certain age. I would say fourth, fifth grade. And then when it starts getting to fifth grade, then it's time to learn the values of winning with grace, losing with dignity, uh, being good sport either way. Uh, if you're not getting playing time, you should work harder in practice and blah, blah, blah. And those are all important life lessons that are very translatable to what the kid's going to experience as an adult uh, outside of sports. Right. <clears throat> and that's what it all comes down to. I can't believe you're going to actually put that in the... I'm, I... No, I'm sure we'll, we'll find something else juicy. But uh, before we lose any listeners, let's actually get to some sports. Uh, Dozier... Hashtag vote Dozier. We did it. Free at last. Free at last. Don't load it. All right, so Dozier gets into the All-Star game as an injury alternate, uh, and he has a home run. Woo-hoo. Padding the American League's lead as they triumph, prevail, and really earn that home field advantage in the World Series for God knows what reason, 6-3 to three over the National League. Uh, Glenn Perkins, Twins closer, personal favorite, uh, closed out the game. Uh, as well. So it's a pretty good night in Cincinnati for the Twins. Yeah, I didn't watch. <laughs> I'm one of those people that caused the record low, you know, uh, viewership or whatever. Because um, I, I just don't care. I don't watch the the NBA. Well, I guess I did. Um, the NBA is the one I like to watch the most just because um, I like all the, like, the dunking contest and the three-point contest. It, I like all the things surrounding it. The game itself is just kind of like meh. And I mean, let's face it, the the NFL equivalent is just a joke. So I don't usually bother watching. But good for Dozier. Good for Perkins. I mean, Dozier played better than, you know, Bryce Harper. You ever listen to Glenn Perkins when he's on 1500, Dozier Judd Mackey? Nope. I don't listen to that station either. Sorry, uh, Doogie. What the hell do you listen to? I don't, I don't listen to sports talk um, because I've just, I, I like, some of what 1500 does, but I hate the signal. I get, I'm such a snob because I have like satellite radio. So I wanted this mm. nice, crisp, clean sound. And you don't get that on, on AM radio. And I think most of the people at KFAN are douchebags. Well, since so. 95% again with my rough math, 
uh, of new cars coming out do have Wi-Fi. Or just get the internet radio. Get the internet stream. That's where everything's going. Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. It seems like a lot of work. I usually listen to music. I mean, I usually don't listen to sports talk. Plus, I, to be honest, I kind of miss the AM hum because uh, look, good memories I have is like going on road trips with my grandparents because they traveled all over the United States and sometimes took me with them when I was a kid. And just listening to the AM radio was like their pastime. And even when we're just traveling up north of Minnesota, it's always uh, 830 WCCO. You had the gentle, mm-hmm. and then burr, 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 burr. that was a great impersonation. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, and I actually kind of like that. And even when KFN was an AM station before it switched over, it's just like it, it's like white noise that you just get used to. And like if you sleep with a fan on at night, like we do, and then you go somewhere that doesn't have a fan, and then you're just like, shit, what's that noise? <laughs> I can't, no, it's, for me, it's my husband snoring. It's like, I can't hear a fan. I, I can't hear much of anything. And, and Minnie Me is, is actually takes after her dad. So she's she's a snorer. Is she? Yep. Now. We went roller skating today, by the way. That was our bucket list item for today. They wanted to go to the roller uh, gardens in St. Louis uh, Park. Are you putting the kids down? What? Are you putting the kids down and getting things off the bucket list? <laughs> no. Every summer we make a bucket list for things that they want to do because in the first few summers when they were old enough to like do stuff and I was off all summer because I am, um, it would be the end of summer and we'd be like, holy crap, we didn't even do anything. So mm-hmm. I, I started, you know, as soon as school lets out, they make a list of all the stuff that they want to do and we just slowly check it off. Now, what are some awesome things that are on that list? Um, they wanted to go eat at the Galaxy Drive-In in St. Louis Park, which we did. Um, they had some movies that they wanted to see, which we've seen. Um, let's see what else is on there. They want to go to a drive-in. There's still a drive-in in in the Twin Cities. It's, um, in, oh, not Oakdale, uh, Lake Elmo, right off of Uh, 94. Oh, drive-in movie. Yeah, Valley uh, Valley High. All right. Of course, as grown-ups, we hate the drive-in because it's, there's bugs and dirt and noisy children running around, but the kids love it. Um, Can't you stay in your car? Well, you can, but that's not, I mean, it's not comfortable. Like, we usually take chairs and go sit out and watch. The kids will I will hit the tailgate up and the kids will be in the back of my car or my truck but um my husband and I usually bring chairs and we sit out. Now is it one of those where it's an actual like solid um like movie screen or is it one of those inflatable ones that are No, it's real. I mean it's a huge gotcha. screen. It's it's the only one that's still around now. There used to be one in Cottage Grove where I grew up, and we went there all the time when I was in high school. Um, but they tore that down and put up a freaking super Walmart or something stupid like that. Oh, die. You keep leaking information. Cottage Grove. Sam Jacobson, mayor. Yeah. He actually went to school with my sister. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, it's actually funny because the wife and I were actually looking at some houses in Cottage Grove. You got a lot for your money out there. Yeah. I mean, we were right... You know, I'm kind of at the high school when I when I was growing up, so it was uh, nice. I mean, it was I, a, I've it, heard that St. Paul Park is not very hospitable anymore. It's kind of the redheaded stepchild to Cottage Grove. Much like Cottage Grove is the redheaded stepchild to Woodbury. There's a hierarchy there. Yes, Woodbury. Hey, uh, now that we've derailed this uh, a little bit before we get <laughs> back to, like, SB talk and Vikings talk... Uh, Woodbury. Have you ever been to Akita? No. Sushi place? Nope. We should go. Really? You don't like sushi? I, well, I'm, I'm kind of picky about my sushi, but I do like sushi. Oh, well, there you go. I didn't realize it was good. It, it is. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, on the Minneapolis side of the world now where, like, everything is good. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> so there's a new pizza we place. Get a- just, what? Oh, God. No, there's a new pizza place that just opened up today. They opened at 4 o'clock today called Giordano's. And my husband was telling me that in, they originated in Chicago, and they're like the best deep dish pizzas. And so I can't even imagine. And they're in Uptown, I believe. But, like, I can't. I mean, there's probably people lined up for days to, to eat this pizza. Well, the one thing that kind of annoys me about deep dish pizza is that if you're eating it there, you have to put in your order, and then an hour and a half later you get your pizza, right? Because... Usually at places like that, if they're really good, they're busy. And also deep dish pizzas take about two weeks to bake. They said 45 minutes. 
Same thing. Right. Essentially. But, uh, I mean, it is good because you go through a couple pitchers of beer, you have a couple apps, socialize. When you when you finally get moved up here into civilization, yep. um, I'll get I'll hook you up with all the good places to eat. One Dye's Kitchen. <laughs> well, that's the cheapest place to eat because yeah. you know, even though you don't grill, I that's that's my husband's thing. I don't grill. Something that is going to be. I'm grilled. content. I'm content to let him do that. Something that is going to be grilled this this day without sports. Uh, it's the annual tradition, unlike any other. The day right after the MLB All Star Game which the MLB All-Stars are you know, getting back to their squads to start up the weekend series tomorrow. And, yeah, there ain't nothing going on. So that's why the ESPYs are tonight. Now, Di, what is your, like, overall take of the ESPYs? Um, I will not watch. Hmm. I might look at the results tomorrow. Your fantasy ESPY award pool? I don't know. Mm-mm. Don't care. I also rarely watch ESPN. Rarely. The hell. I just, you know, I get fed up. Wait, with so you only watch their... Vikings games, and you only watch um, um, FSN when Jamie Hirsch is a nun. She's not bad. I mean, she's definitely better than those Fox Sports North girls. Yeah. I mean, not that that's really saying much, but at least she has a last name. You know, they give her some credibility. Uh, actually, one of the Fox Sports North girls, um, I think it's Angie Vestruvers, Vestruvers is uh, covering the Vikings now. I uh, watched a couple of her videos, and she's actually good. She's really good. Well, you know, I'm glad that, and like Jenny Taft, she, you know, she's at Fox One or whatever. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> she was one of the original girls. I, I would like to see them, I hate that. I hated their existence. I hated that that was a thing. But if some of these young women could use that as a catapult to, you know, do more things in their career, mm-hmm. then I guess I can't hate on them for that. But I just, like I said, I hate the idea of them. They're basically just eye candy. They didn't even have last names. It was just the most ridiculous thing ever. Well, now, do you think they didn't list their last names out of because they wanted to dehumanize them to a degree or were they afraid of stalkers because you know if you're up late watching fsn at two in the morning between the infomercials and you're watching the commercials for the fsn north girls you're like oh, i wonder what her last name is her but then you make that. one up i mean just seriously if if it make it smith for all i care but just legitimately give them a freaking last name angie smith caitlin smith whatever blah blah smith emmett smith Oh, hey, by the way, I know we've, we've kind of gone around on this, but my latest obsession, food-wise, is my waffle maker. Oh, yeah. What have you been made, making with the waffles? Um, I made red velvet um, ice cream sandwich and ice cream sandwiches. All so right, it was now. basically red velvet batter that you obviously make in the waffle maker. Then you cool them, you cut them into fourths, and then you soften some vanilla ice cream, smear that on there, put the other... So you know, put the sandwich together and then you dip the ends in mini chocolate chip cookie or chocolate chips. Now, uh, I have a, a long standing beef with red velvet anything. Well, there's because, something wrong with you then. Well, <sighs> hate to go racial. I don't, I don't usually go racial, but all of you freaking white people love red velvet anything so much, and I don't understand it because. Most of them are simply chocolate cake with food coloring or chocolate cake with beet juice in it. That is it. I know, and I didn't even know that because I'd never made red that velvet is it. before and by hand. I mean, like you can buy a box mix or whatever, but I made mine from scratch. And it is basically, yeah, it's cocoa powder and a crap ton of red food coloring. Now, if you just put cream cheese frosting on top of a chocolate cake, blindfolded a white person, and then <laughs> gave them that, they'd be like, that's that's red velvet cake. I love it. Red velvet. Red it's velvet. Just, it just looks prettier. And this morning I made, um, besides making regular waffles, I made biscuit, sausage, and cheese waffles. So you take, you know, the biscuits that you get in the can at the yeah. grocery store. Yeah. Um, you flatten it out. You put some, I put some sausage and cheese and some egg, and then you make it into a ball, and then you kind of flatten it a little bit, and you stick it down in the waffle maker, and it was like, it was legit. 
but that's not I, really good. I just bought a cookbook that says it says will it waffle, and it's fifty three unique recipes of crap you can make in your waffle maker that you would never think that you could make in a waffle maker. What's the most unique one you've stumbled across so far? Oh God, um, soup. No, they did. Will like it a, waffle? No. They, did, they made they made like a tamale pie. Yeah. In there, um, there was like chicken. Like they li- literally, yeah. Um, well, what, what they just like pounded out chicken breast and then. I don't know. I haven't. Out. I haven't ventured that far. I bet you that would work. I bet you it would. They have waffle. All, like tons of vegetables. They'll waffle. I don't know. It's like I said. It's my obsession right now. What What's my obsession is the stupid SBU award categories. So besides the Arthur Ashe Courage Award, which ha- has been talked about at length, and Caitlyn Jenner is winning tonight. Uh, I've already said my piece that she is deserving because you know what she did. If you strip away all the Kardashianness around her, I don't think anyone would have a problem with it. But the fact that she has sullied herself with the Kardashian brand, I think that's why people have a lot of umbrage. But what she did for transgender people coming out in that fashion, well, not coming out, but living her life the way that uh, on her terms is courageous. And we do forget that Bruce Jenner was a hell of an athlete back in the day. I mean, he was basically Michael Phelps. Right. No, and I and I agree with you 100%. Um, if he hadn't associated himself with the Kardashians, which most people find extremely annoying and wish they would just go away, um, this wouldn't be as big of a deal. I mean, there's always going to be people who are uncomfortable, so uncomfortable with the idea that, you know, a man wants to be a woman or a man feels like he was born a man but really is a woman, it, that nothing will change that for them. It's it. it they live in a different world. And I agree. I think what she's done, he's, it's hard, she's done because she's a she. Um, she identifies herself as a woman. Is very courageous. I mean, it was, I mean, I can't imagine what that would be like. So I think absolutely she deserves that award. Yeah, and with the whole Kardashian stank. <laughs> like, by the way, Kardashian stank is my favorite uh, indie rock band. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, say uh, like another old timey famous Olympian had done the exact same thing and decided to live uh, his life as a woman, like say Carl Lewis had done it and then, uh, won this award. No one would even have raised an eyebrow or any umbrage at all. But the fact that it's the Kardashians, that's what segregates the internet and, uh, makes everything such a controversial issue and there's i mean there's just hateful people also i mean you can't uneducated you know whatever i mean i just feel like there are people who don't even care about the kardashians that still have an issue with this kardashian stank hashtag no but i I love to start using that so oh yeah that's awesome now uh, a lot now this was a, a fake uh, awards show when it really started and, and to a degree it still is it's simply for programming like I, I remember when they ran the first couple ones they actually had to pay the athletes to show up for these awards but uh, here are some of the uh, awards best female athlete best male athlete woohoo best breakthrough athlete best championship performance best coach best comeback blah 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 so these are all just completely garbage. Like the only good thing that's ever come out of the ESPYs is uh, the Jim Valvano speech, and you know they they play that uh, on Mike Mike this morning, and I watched the YouTube video like uh, maybe every one uh, month or so, maybe every other month because the the guy just has such personality and presence, and the fact that he started a great foundation that's raised hundreds of millions of dollars for cancer, uh, which is something that's very close to me. Like my dad, my grandfather passed away from cancer. And the the fact that he's dying, like he died like weeks after that speech and the fact that he was so weak, but he still mustered up that uh, amazing speech uh, out of nowhere. It's, it, it's awesome. I, I mean, you, you can't watch that without yeah, getting, getting a little dusty up in there. Aw, Andy, you have a soft side. Except uh, he references the Green Bay Packers oh, well. in his speech. Nothing's perfect, right? Yeah. Uh, what can you do? But uh, other than that, the SBs are just kind of frou-frou they're, garbage. They're just kind of dumb. Although, you know, I, I was looking at a, um, 
a Bleacher Report article where they were kind of, they put the category up and then they would, you know, give the prediction of what they thought, you know. And Was it know, a slideshow? <clears throat> no. Oh. Which is good because I hate those slideshows. I would like to strangle whoever came up with that idea. Um, but best female athlete, they have Serena Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't argue with that. And then another one I thought was interesting is for best fighter, which I'm, you know, I'm guessing MMA or whatever. They got Ronda Rousey. Which is awesome. Yeah. Which is totally awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's just kind of, to me, it's like we're so desperate for sports that we have to make this up. Now, yeah. I, I, I mean, like, what else would we be doing on, on a random Wednesday? Besides just plowing through Netflix. I mean, the WNBA, you know, they're playing. I mean, that is a thing. Are they playing tonight? I don't know if they're playing tonight. Because I I'm actually think that it's dead, dead. Like literally sports. nothing on. Yeah. Like not even like. Like there's like six international, like random, like cricket or a soccer friendly or something like that. Wow. That's, that's insane. That's kind of crazy. I'm taking uh, Mini Me to the um, Lynx game next Wednesday. It's actually a noon game, so that'll be fun. Wait, all right, no, hold on. They're playing at noon on a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Damn. And apparently, it's a thing. Like it's camp day or something, uh, and they get like sixteen, seventeen thousand people. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, totally awesome. I was say, I... If they run that like with their normal time, and it, say the Twins are in town, it's like. I don't know, man. I don't know. Have you ever been to a game? Uh, a Lynx game? Yes. No. All right, I'm taking you when you come up. Okay. Can it can it be at night? Yes, most of their games are at <laughs> night. <laughs> Jeez. I was going to say, like, uh, middle of the work week, and Wednesday is usually people's most productive day because they're usually easing in Mondays and Tuesdays and then already looking to check out Thursdays and Fridays. So they're having it in the middle of the busiest work day of the week. And then if it wasn't something cool like a, like a kid's camp where they're bussing people in, it should be like, I, I don't know who's going to be there. Dying so Howard. Wednesday, yeah, exactly. Uh, so Wednesday is supposed to be your most productive day of the week. Yeah. Um, Which like, is funny because I don't work on Wednesdays. <laughs> well, there you go. I, I mean, <laughs> they always kind of say that because usually – you know, Mondays, Tuesdays, you're just easing back into the week and you're usually swamped and catching up on emails on Mondays. And then um, once you get to Thursday, it's Thursday, Thursday, hello. And then you're basically already mentally checked out for the weekend. Okay. Well, that would explain a lot. But that's just the office dweller plebeians, whereas I work every single day around the clock. Sometimes when I can't sleep with a baby. <laughs> How's that going? She's still Although, sleeping well? She is sleeping pretty well. Like she'll get maybe five, six hours in the first crack and then like up every hour un- until um it's time to get up. But you know, she'll usually go down about eight and uh we got her one month check in tomorrow. And I-, I think she's up to a healthy weight and she's starting to smile, which is awesome. Like I texted you that picture. Yeah, that was really cute. She she tooted. That was a toot smile. Nice. Oh, I know. I remember of like, oh, it's so cute. And they're like, it's just gas. Don't be so excited. Yeah, she is uh, definitely the best parts of myself and mostly the wife. So that's why she's going to be the cutest little girl in the world. Although I'm going to try not make her a princess. You know, Right. The thing, that, that's the thing about with girls is like, I, I did not want to raise like a prissy. I don't want to get dirty. I, you know, and mini me is not, I mean, she's, she's, I mean, she loves glitter and girly stuff, but she will get, I mean, she'll get down in the dirt and dig and she's like all about science and she's, you know, so she's kind of both like what, like when she told me when she was four, she's like, mommy, I want to be a princess and a race car driver when I grow up. Okay. No, she's going to be dirty and smart, so she's going to be like a finished carpenter. She's going to be on the job site like, hey, Bob, how's it hanging? You got that drywall up yet? I don't think that's the route she's going to go, but I have no idea what she's going to do. I know my oldest will, 
he would make a really good teacher. He's really, really, really good with kids. So who knows? It's that's part of the fun of watching them grow up. All right. So the wife just texted me. Uh, try three hours her first sleep, not five. LOL. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm a, I'm a heavy sleeper, and the baby's still breastfeeding. So uh, not my job, not my prob. Wow. Your wife must be an absolute saint. She is awesome. I mean, uh, you, you'll get to know her. Plus, she's with me. Right. I yeah. mean, yeah, I have to talk to her Speaking about of an absolute saint, Teddy Bridgewater, working out with Mike Wallace, and Mike Wallace is keeping his mouth shut. Uh, Teddy put it up a picture on Instagram. Apparently, they've been working out all summer. And, you know, Mike Wallace coming over for the – Fifth and seventh round draft picks, uh, low risk opportunity for the Vikings, especially with the way his contract is loaded up. If he's a bust, they can get out of it um, with zero guaranteed money in the next years. Uh, kind of like how Adrian's deal was set up for a little bit less money and a true deep threat. We haven't had that in a long time. Maybe Sidney Rice, although he wasn't really the field stretcher no. that uh, a la Randy Moss was. And, Wallace definitely isn't in that category, but someone who can actually just take the top off the defense with the speed because he can actually get on the field because he can run routes. Cordero. Um, it would <laughs> be nice to have in the offense, especially if he keeps his mouth shut. Right. I would like him to keep his mouth shut. That, that would be awesome. Now, and you know what? Don't, I, I honestly think that Cordero's figured a few things out. Um, he has an incredible coaching staff, and I think like they've who? gotten through to him. No, just kidding. What? I, I was like, like who? No, I was just kidding. Oh, Lord. Um, so I, th- I when I interviewed him, he just, he seemed really sincere when he basically said, I wasn't taking it seriously. I wasn't doing my job the second year because the first year came so easy. So I am curious to see what, what he puts out there this year. And I don't think they're going to have a lot of patience with him. I think he either shows a great improvement this year, or I think they're just going to kind of wash their hands. Yeah, uh, I, I feel kind of bad for Cordero, but uh, on this week's episode of Purple for the Win, I uh, did a mailbag, and one of the questions was predicting stat lines for the Vikings. And I had Cordero Patterson, 2015, four catches, 18 yards, zero touchdowns. No, really? Yeah. Ouch. I, I, I just think he, he's going to so get So not even in, in the kicking? The kick game. You don't think that he's going to do anything with that? No, uh, he'll be the kick returner. Uh, Diggs, oh. I don't know what they're going to do with Diggs because if they keep him and Cordero, debatably they're keeping six wide receivers, especially if Thielen sticks around. So I, I don't think they would be able to slide Diggs down to the practice squad. So they may have to make a tough decision if Cordero stumbles out of the gates early because he'll, yeah. he'll get an opportunity, but – uh, it's going to be a, a one-strike policy. Right. I no, think. absolutely. Like I said, I don't think they're going to have a whole lot of patience with him, nor should they at this point. I mean, he, he's been given every opportunity. Um, Diggs is interesting, though. I've, I've watched some of the um, OTA videos. I mean, that kid has some sick moves. I mean, you know, it's people say, well, it's not in pads, and it's, you know, not in a game situation. But that kid has, I mean, he can legit turn on a dime. Yeah, and uh, I think he could be pretty exciting. I, I don't think they used him quite right at Maryland, and uh, he is. Yeah, people keep saying that he's gonna threaten Cheryl's, and I don't necessarily believe that. Uh, he did most of his punt returning as a freshman, so that was three years ago. Uh, he's more of a kick returner, and Cheryl's. You know, punt returners aren't that hard to come by, or that easy to come by uh, in this league because uh, he was third in the league in average two years ago, and he dropped down to is either fifth or sixth last year. And it, he's not a guy who's going to light things up. And you know, he's not like a Devin Hester who's going to be a threat to take it to the house every single time on a punt return. But you just need a guy back there who's not going to muff it and can get some decent yardage when the blocking's set up. Uh, that's all you really want because there's nothing more demoralizing and game-changing especially for a defensive-minded guy like Zimmer, if your defense shuts him down to three and out, and then they get a punt, your guy muffs it, and then your defense is back on the field, that sucks. That changes the game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I like Cheryl's. I mean, you know, he's... he's Everyone he's, tries to kill Cheryl's, kills Cheryl's off, like every I know. training game. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he yep. just sticks around <laughs> yep, and gets an extension. He's just got it. And same with Thielen. I think Thielen's, you know, they like him. I mean, he's done some some good things. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy, you know, what the roster looks like right now. And they because, are going to have to make some tough decisions. Because I, I always said, even going into free agency and the draft, that our wide receiver group is the deepest group on the team, except maybe outside of defensive tackle. Uh, but there's no one great yet. Like Charles Johnson had uh, half a decent year. Yeah, we'll see what he can string together now. Um, you know, Thielen is kind of unknown, although I would never bet against him in my entire life. Cordero, who knows? Uh, Jay Wright, I don't think he'll ever live up to the potential. Um, then also, you know, throw Mike Wallace into that group and also Stephon Diggs and you have an interesting group. It's going to be hard to pick five, maybe even six. Yeah, but Turner will figure it out. I mean, that's what he's here for, you know. Because uh, Arif's point out that Turner has kept six wide receivers before, uh, except that was in Washington and San Diego when he was running things. And Zimmer's a defensive guy. He loves the platoon. And I, I think we're just going to be more inclined to carry uh, the extra couple bodies at the end of the roster on the defensive side rather than that wide receiver. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Yeah. Uh, ooh, by the way, for stat predictions, I did put Charles Johnson 75 catches, 1,090 yards, and six touchdowns, baby. Really? Yeah. I like him. Big year. I would love that. So I Okay, so I have a little story here, and I, I, can't, yep. I cannot name names, okay? What does it rhyme with? <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you. But uh, there's a Vikings player that lives in my building. He actually lives on my floor. We're in a two, we're in a two level townhouse. Oh, you've named names before. I know who it is, but proceed. Okay. <laughs> so he's getting off the elevator with one of his buddies. My husband and I get on the elevator, and all I can smell is weed. Are you sure it's his? I are was. Sure, are you sure I, it's not yours? Because marijuana is supposed to cause him. memory loss. Die. I, I was not actually with him. But, I mean, it was like, dude, really? Wow. So, yeah, it was just a little kind of funny story. Well, that is the like the worst-kept secret in the NFL. And oh, of course. It's so easy to beat uh, a weed test. And, honestly, if you do get popped for weed, you're, you're, it's, it's really a secondary measure of intelligence because you know exactly where you're going to get tested, and you got to stay clean for two weeks beforehand, piss, and then you can smoke all you want the rest of the season until next year. But I'm actually for giving the players weed because it's, it, it is a pain management thing, whereas you know, mentally you are blocking out the pain, very similar to more like hardcore narcotics like Oxycontin, uh, Vicodin, et cetera. And you know, Oxy and Vicodin can, are far more addictive than uh, and, and harmful than, than weed. Like, you, you don't see anyone uh, break into your house and stealing your TV to go buy weed. <laughs> that, 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 that's either Coke or Oxy. That's what you need. Or crack. Yeah. And uh, honestly, if the players want the weed and it helps them deal with the pain, helps them get out on the field on Sunday, uh, I don't really care. You know, and it's, and I'm sure like 75, 80% of the league smokes. Mm. I mean, you know, it's just, it, it's a high number. It's got to be a high number. Yep. And I don't feel, I, you know, either way about it. I, I don't care. I mean, like you said, it, it, it definitely, I know there's been some research as far as like dealing with concussions and that kind of thing, um, that that can be helpful. So I don't know. I don't really care. Now, weed doesn't actually heal the brain from concussions. It just uh, makes not care, man. I got my bell rung. You might get a little fat from all those Funyuns and the, the animal, the whatever those animal cracker cookie things were like the, do you know what I'm talking about? The circus animal crackers where they have like the coating on it and it's like this little. The frosting, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then they got the, the, the round sprinkles. Right. Yeah. They get stuck in your teeth for days. Now, what's been talked about a lot is trading weed to the players for taking HGH out of the game. But I think that would be, if they allowed both simultaneously, that would be awesome because we'd have like 450-pound offensive linemen. 
because right. you get high, you get the munchies, and you're an HGH, the load hold's going to be 500 pounds. He might be 500 pounds. I mean, when I saw him at training camp last year, it was like, he's the largest human being I've ever seen in my life. Is he larger? Hmm. Is he larger than, let's see, who's a fat Timberwolf? I'm trying to think. Uh, Oliver Miller. Did he play for the Wolves? Uh, that was before my Timberwolves time. Robert Trailer, RIP. He didn't play for the Wolves, but he was big. He's, I mean, it, it was unreal. Like, I mean, I know I'm not a very big person, but like, I was about as big as his thigh. I mean, I, and I probably came about, up about that high. I mean, he's just monstrous. Now, it, when you see someone like that who is like two feet taller than you, about 200 pounds heavier than you, it, is it really hard to believe that we're all like the same species down, deep down? Um, I don't know. Like we're of the same genetic pool. It's crazy. Or you, you see like the mountain on Game of Thrones and be like, nah, I, I, I don't know. I don't think we share a common ancestor. I think you're from a different planet, man. He might, he might be. Yeah. He might not even be human. Probably not. Someone who's not human. Carl Anthony Towns. Wolves. Oh. Summer League. Did you see that sick no-look pass that he, he Yes. Did? It was beautiful. Now, I'm calling it right now. That might be his high watermark for his rookie year. Probably not. No. No, I mean. Do you have hashtag faith? Are you on board? They're not going to be great this year. I now, mean. It, I feel like this year is going to be a lot of games where it was last year, where Wiggins would go for 30 and 12. Levine would have two or three uh, ESPN top 10 dunks or vines that just get retweeted all over the Twitter machine. And then the Wolves would lose by 25. I think you'll... That was a typical game last year. You, for sure. But you'll see a lot less of that, I think. They're going to be okay. Last year, they were terrible. So they're improving from terrible to okay. Great. I mean, but there's this core that they are building, that they have this these really young guys. And especially if Garnett is going to be that mentor that, you know, they really need, which is what I'm assuming they're paying him for because he's never going to play 20 minutes again. I mean, that was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Oh yeah, he can play twenty minutes. Man, probably not. So it just seems like there's re this foundation is really, really good and really solid. I would like to see um, Flip step away from the coaching and just focus on being a GM because I think he's a damn good GM. He's an okay coach. So they need a coach. I was hoping for Hoiberg, and then he went to you know the Bulls. So I don't know. I mean, I have, they just need to attract a good, I don't want to say young, but just a, a coach that, like Edelman never liked to work with the young guys. Like it was, I mean, that's why Shabazz Muhammad's game suffered so bad is because he made him sit on the bench. Oh, Edelman didn't want to be here in the first place because I mean, he he's older. Uh, was his wife sick or did his wife pass one of the two? She didn't pass, but she had medical issues. Okay. So his... Head was obviously you know where it should be with his family. Wasn't on the job. Didn't want to be here. That was kind of a lost little section of Wolves history. And you know, Flip is okay as like the caretaker, but uh, I think he's. He, I, I think his ego says that he could still do both jobs, and that he doesn't want to step away from this young team unless he can land, uh, you know, that big young hot uh, name that would put some butts in the seats as he's doing a favor to you know, Mr. Taylor up top. Right. So when John Calipari comes to the Wolves for $20 million a year, actually, Coach Cal would want complete control when he comes back to the NBA. So, bye, Flip. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having um, hand signal communication with the youngest child right now because I'm like, um, I'm busy. What do you want? Would you, would you just give her the finger? <laughs> no. Let's get real. No, I would never do that. No. What you want? I don't know. 
I couldn't no. figure it out. I said, look, I'm done in like 12 minutes. Y- you can deal for a minute. All right. Now, who would be like one of the young names that would excite you? Missed out on Hoiberg. I think we had like a one in 20 chance of ever landing him in the first place. But who would you get excited about? Shaka Smart. Shaka. Now, didn't he just take a job? You know, I don't know. I honestly have not paid any attention, but that would be a sexy hire for sure. To the Google machine checking it. He is the head coach at, oh, Texas. Why? Right. He switched, right. He switched college, college teams. Now, hear me out. What would you feel uh, about a certain young coach has a pedigree of winning, has had some mild success at the collegiate level, is young, and can relate to these young wolves? What would you say about this candidate? Are you going to name it? Yeah, yeah, but first I want to be like, Interested or not interested? Until I hear the name, I, I'm interested. Richie Patino, come on down. No. Mm-mm. Come on. Nope. Come on, Richard. Just move nope. to the other side of the river. Mm-mm-mm-mm. And I'm sure Shaka Smart's probably, I don't know, I think he'd be ready. Well, the thing is, he just got to Texas and he just got paid an ass load of money. And he's from Madison, Wisconsin. I just looked that up on his Wikipedia page. Huh. Well, I like him a little less now. Yeah. But yeah, as a guy who, yeah, he was at VCU for such a long time, finally landed that quote unquote big job. Although Texas, when you said Texas, you don't really think college basketball. Heck, you don't really even think college football that much anymore. I owe burn. Uh, but uh, I just don't see him jumping ship uh, after a, a year. Oh, no, I don't, I don't think so either. But, I mean, Flip might not be ready to give up the team. Well, they keep year. talking about Izzo. Come on, baby. Finally ready to step it up to the big time. I wouldn't say no. They have to pay him an ass load of money. They would have to pay him an ass load of money. But this team, I mean, this, yes, everyone's like, oh, it's Minnesota. It's cold. Everyone hates it. Blah, blah, blah. You have to pay somebody a billion dollars. But this team, this cell that they have is solid. I mean, you would have an opportunity to work with these kids that are, I mean, at least two of them are going to be superstars. You know, Levine, the ceiling is high on him. I mean, I really think if he could put on some weight, I think he could be a superstar too. He's certainly fun to watch. I mean, last year when they did their scrimmage, I didn't go this year to the scrimmage that they did, but last year when they did their scrimmage and I was watching him dunk, it's like, or even like the slam dunk contest in the NBA All Star game. He's ridiculous. I mean, there has to be more to your game than being able to slam a ball. And he's definitely not a point guard. I mean, that experiment was really, really awful. He just doesn't. That's not his in his skill set. So they need to figure that out, and I think he'll be okay. But he likes Space Jam. Oh, did I tell you I showed that to my kids? They loved it. We had to watch it twice. Oh, they've never seen it before. Nope. You know, it was really depressing. Uh, after the dunk contest, Levine said he was like one or two when Space Jam came out. Yeah. I was like, get the f- <laughs> out of here. I was like Taylor Swift's 1989 album. I'm just like, oh, that was the year I was born. And I'm like, that was the year, that was my freshman year of college. That was the year that uh, Di got drunk off of Boone's farm and then yacked on a police cruiser. No, I... Actually, my first semester of college was actually at UW-Madison, and all of their frat parties, they only have Old Milwaukee. That's the only kind of beer they ever have. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on. Back the truck. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Wait. You were a Badger. For one semester. Do you want to know why? Why? Because when I graduated from high school, I wanted to be a lawyer, and... UW-Madison was top 25 schools for pre-law. It's a bottom 25 for ass. <laughs> and it was, t- like, nobody liked me. Well, I mean, they liked me, but, like, whenever we would watch sporting events together, like, if the Badgers were playing the Gophers, I would always cheer for the Gophers. Wait, so they're, like, you only... they're like, you go to this school. I'm like, I don't care. Wait, so you only went there one semester? Yes. 
Uh, but you were there for Halloween, right? Yes. Yeah, and that was back when they actually could have Halloween on like State Street and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, I went as an angel that year for juxtaposition. <laughs> nice. All exactly. Right. Oh. Uh, why don't you tell me a story about your your time at Wisconsin uh, as I Google here real quick? Tell you a story? Yeah. Um, well, I couldn't get into the dorms, so I lived off a little bit off campus. I mean, it was still on the edges of campus, but it was in uh, like an apartment that was set up like dorms. So they set you up with roommates and whatever. And so it was four girls to an apartment. And so two of you shared a bedroom and then two of you shared a bedroom. And when I say bedroom, it's not really a bedroom. It's very, very small. You had a desk and a bed. That was it. Dear but you diary. Had, but, you had, but you had a kitchen and a living room and one bathroom for four girls. Yeah. Um, and my roommates were um, a deadhead from Chicago who would disappear, smoke weed all the time, and then disappear for like days following the Grateful Dead. Um, I had a girl straight off the farm from Wisconsin and then the other one was a Jewish American princess from Long Island who, you know, I got a job working at the student union in the deli. And I came home from work one night and her and all of her friends are in our, in our apartment and they're like doing, you know, lines of coke, doing ecstasy. And I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> I've only seen this stuff on TV. I'm like, oh, you want some? No, no, I do not. Nope. No, thank you. I'm good. But when they ask the second time, they're like, you're like, All right. <laughs> no. Uh, no, that stuff scared the hell out of me. There was no, nope, uh-uh. Never tried it. Now, in 1989, the Badgers were 2-9, and nine, one and 1-7 in the Big Ten, back when there was, you know, 10 teams in the Big Ten. Uh, uh, they were second from the bottom. Northwestern went 0-11. Uh, Gophers defeated the Badgers that year, 24-22 uh, at, see, that must have been at the Dome. Yeah, so woohoo. Oh, and another kind of interesting thing is my apartment looked o- out over into Camp Randall. So, like, I could see into the stadium. But I never went to any of their games. So, it, all right, so what, what prompted you to leave and then become a Tommy? Um, well, I hated it. <laughs> I was, you know, I, I was really, and you will not believe this, but I was really shy when I was younger. Like, really, really shy. So... I wouldn't talk to anybody. I just, I went to my job and, you know, I just, it was way too big for me. It was way too much school. You know what people call that? Stuck up. (laughs) I was not stuck up. I was just really, 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 really shy. So I came back and like, I I went to Inver Hills Community College for two years, got my generals done, and then I transferred to St. Thomas. Sounds like doing a prison stretch. (laughs) Nice. Where'd you do your stretch? Inver Hills. Hey, it, Baby. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I needed to figure it out. Did you watch Orange is the New Black? I watched a couple episodes. Can't get into it. No, I can't either. Although but... I like Crazy Eyes. Oh, yeah. All right, so while we're on TV to bring it home, since there are literally no sports to talk about <laughs> this evening, and, uh, well, Mankato's up. Oh. So, how's the health? Um, I'm okay. Mankato still? Looking good? No, Maybe um, no, nope, not going. Because you can't handle the heat and the vapors down one six nine because it's uh, Mankato in August is basically like backwater Louisiana hot. It's so gross. Yeah. Last year it was so hot. Yeah, like your face melts off. It's that hot. Bah. All right, so on TV, Food Network star. I hate that show. <laughs> okay, why? I hate that show mostly because the only winner worth the mm-hmm is Guy Fieri, and I, I have sort of a love-hate relationship with Guy. Like, he's really awesome, but also eh, kind of annoying. And uh, the whole competition, these people on the first episode, they're like, I- I've been waiting for and preparing for this moment my entire life. This is my time now. And then the first episode, they always do uh, Bobby Flay's look. All right. Why don't you give us 30 seconds about why you should be the next Food Network star? Then they put the person up there, and it's like... <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? Like, you know, this is how every season starts. You have 30 seconds to talk about yourself. You said you wanted this job your entire life, so you don't come in prepared? You don't have anything ready to go? Come on. Are you kidding me? 
It's kind of funny, actually. And the last, was it last Sunday when that chick had that meltdown? And she was like, well, you don't even watch it, do you? Well, no, I actually did uh, turn it on, switching back and forth between The Last Ship, which is actually a really good show. Uh, oh, that has McSteamy on it. It does. Oh, he's so he's, awesome. he's a good-looking dude. He's a good-looking uh, dude. I have a tangent after this point. But uh, the whole advertisement's on... Food Network for the biggest meltdown in Food Network star history. Because uh, I actually wanted to see that, but then it was just some lady being quasi-racist and stupid and then crying and walk off the stage. And, and then having to go back and sit in the room with the people that the, she just roasted, <laughs> by the yes. way. I, I thought it was like, oh, I, I thought someone was going to cuss or go after one another with a chef's knife or something. But it was just like, I yeah. mean, that was, still, just, that was still pretty epic for as tame as that show is. As far as, yeah, it's not like Real Housewives where they like throw tables at each other. Well, and it, crap like that's that. basically like an average episode of Top Chef, which is the best cooking show. I do love Top, Top Chef. Of, Top Chef is great, mostly because of Padma. But uh, the tangent on she McSteamy, is hot. she is hot and seriously hot. I think she's pushing fifty. No, wow. Padma, yeah. Wow. All right, now I gotta Google this. But good for uh, the, her. The McSteamy uh, tangent is there's, uh, I think it's uh, Valentine's Day uh, is the movie, and it's her and, um, no, McDreamy, er Eric Dane, wherever his name is, uh, and Bradley Cooper are a gay couple. She's 45. Sorry. Damn it. That's what I was looking at. She's my age. Pretty darn good for her. Yeah. And and plus. Way to put me to shame, Padma. Oh, yeah, she she had a kid with Salman Rushdie. Forgot they were married. What? Yeah. You're serious? Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. Absolutely. Now, Food Network, stick on that uh, just to close this out. Uh, Pioneer Woman. You, it kind of looked like Re. Someone said that on Twitter. I was like, that's That was me. me. No, it was... um. Oh, maybe. oh, yeah. Someone. You did your Woman Crush Wednesday yeah. of her. All right, and yeah. Nate, I think it was Nate Denny, um, said, is this at Di Murphy? I'm in. And I'm like, no, but I can kind of sort of see it. Sort of. And it is fun. Now she always talks like this. And, except I, I, I like her, except I feel like the people on the show um, in, in real life like can barely stand her. Because I, I feel like she's exactly the same off camera as she is on camera. Which is just like too much. Too bubbly and too over the top. Yeah. And also tangent on farm work. It feels like 95% of work on a farm or ranch is mending fences. Like fixing a fence. Yeah. Why don't you just make the fence better to begin with? Right. Like, you know, use steel. You know? Solid steel or carbon. Carbonite. There you go. But no, we do these yeah. beat up old fence posts that are just yeah. gonna rot. Alright. Um well I again that was another hour that just completely flew by. And we actually wove in a lot more topical sports even though there's no sports to talk about. It's painful right now. I mean I'm having an issue. Like I Yeah. It's it's I want football really badly. Like I miss football like in the worst way right now. Now are you gonna do fantasy this year? Yeah, I will. I was in three leagues last year. I don't know if I'll, or maybe I was in four. I would probably cut back on that. I, because I, I, I don't know. I love it. Even though I have to, you know, cheer for people that I might not necessarily like, like all the Packers. Although I never draft Packers. Never. You don't? I feel like that's a missed opportunity. Yeah. I, I, because it, it's like an emotional hedge. It is. Like, say so you got Jordy Nelson, and he's going against the oh, Vikings. Oh, no, I can, and... you know what? You're, I completely correct myself, because last year I decided that I would not do that, and I did have Jordy Nelson. I would have preferred to have Aaron Rodgers, obviously, but, yeah. So I did. I did have Packers last year, and I, but I will never start them if they're playing against the Vikings, because then I have to cheer for them, which I can't do. No, but that's where the emotional hedge comes in. Right. No, I'm okay with that. I don't ever play in money leagues. Hold on, I'm just picking the perfect Padma picture for my Women Crush Wednesday. Oh, good lord. Uh, speaking of Women Crush, it was uh, Ted's birthday today. I know, and I completely forgot to wish him a happy birthday. I'm an awful friend. It's all right, I did twice. 
Did you see my picture? No, I did not. I'll have to look that up. <sighs> yeah, find that for you. No, it's uh, I, I did some Photoshop work. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be good. Uh, Is it Ted in jorts? Uh no, no, no. It's uh, one of his existing photos. Here, I'll, I'll send it to you on the Skype. This is a good podcast oh, okay. right here. Do <laughs> well, Those are two of his favorite teams, the Green Bay Packers and now, Michigan. This doesn't come over well on audio, but the picture is uh, you can look it up on my timeline at Andy Carlson Show. Uh, Ted, uh, wearing Cheesehead, hanging out with his two best friends, Aaron Rodgers and Desmond Howard. Of his Michigan days. But I can tell times. you he's not 45. Who also, Desmond Howard, Packer, Super Bowl MVP. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't even think about that. No. So that's a, like a triple on Tron That was beautiful. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for the day. Is there anything exciting uh, for you coming up? Um, no. We just mostly hang out at the pool and do our bucket list. So that's And making stuff on, on my waffle maker. Now, you mentioned a couple weeks ago that the writing bug was back. Was, did you put some back teen on it? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do right now. I, I, I felt really excited after, when I did, after I did the Cordero Patterson interview, and, and that made me. What I really think I need to do is just resurrect my, own, my blog again, the one that I had before I started writing for Daily Norseman. Because now, eventually, if you don't write, can they just kick you out of DN, like a motorcycle gang, if you don't ride? They could. They like me. So I think, you know, it's just kind of whatever, you know. Um, but, yeah, because I, 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 I want to be able to write about all Minnesota sports, not just the Vikings. So I think if I can – it's like with anything. If you don't do it, you you lose it. And I and I, I don't want to lose that. I, I enjoy that part of um, – of the hobby for me. Cause it is a hobby. I mean, I'm not trying to make money at this. Um, but the podcast thing is really fun too. So I don't know. We'll, we'll have, we'll have to kind of see. You know, Ted has a lot of free time now. You guys should resurrect the, the um, rough in the podcast. Yeah. He's, he actually really is cool with just being a fan now, which to me blows my mind because some of the stuff he's the content he's put out on daily Norseman, some of the, my favorite stuff. Um, and I, and I miss reading that and I, and I miss doing our podcast too. Cause it was a lot of fun, but you know, he's at a different place. He's enjoying being a grandpa and, you know, he has his grandsons now. So it, it's a, it's a different thing for him. And he's got to get to dinner at Denny's at four o'clock. Right. And sit on the same side of the booth. Back in my day, Grand Slam was 79 cents. Or something like that. <laughs> nice. uh, see, uh, coming up for me, Purple for the Win, Monday's episode was just a mailbag. Uh, next Monday, I have a guest confirming. Can't announce it yet. It's kind of big. It's good times. Really? Oh, uh, I also got a, a banner uh, from yes. the good people at Vistaprint. Oh, did you see the picture? I did. Because it was baking awesome. on it. It was like, it, and then all I could think about was bacon. It's fantastic. Now, I, I spent uh, a couple extra shillings, a couple shekels, for the high-end, uh, heavy-duty outdoor vinyl, and then the me- the metal grommets, so this baby it can withstand like a nuclear holocaust. I mean, the only thing that's gonna be left after we nuke each other to death is cockroaches and spam and my banner. Awesome for, for the win. Perfect. Yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. Gonna be flying it high at uh, Boulder Tap House in Mankato. It's gonna be good times, uh, and just hanging out, doing a lot. The shows and crank out a lot of good content. I look forward to it. Damn straight. Uh, but we're out of here for another week. Uh, we'll actually talk some sports next week. More, a uh, little more sports. A little now more. We talk some sports. Yeah. And, but it always comes back to the food. Maybe we should just do a food podcast. That would be fun. We should have. A, you, we should just have a food segment. Did you see Giada's cleavage, my lord? You know what? Can she not? I mean, can she not put a camisole on? I mean, it's really not that difficult. She looks damn good for 70. It's just, she looks weird. She's a weird, like, she has a high forehead. She's got some, I don't know. I mean, and I'm tired of seeing her boobs. Like, just put them away. Just put them away. They're pretty nice, though. Follow us on Twitter at Andy Must Die. Uh, die is at Die Murphy MN. I'm at Andy Carlson Show. Uh, subscribe, rate us on the iTunes little review. Little rating, 
would be some love. Uh, YouTube, Stitcher, all over the place. The website, as always, AndyMustDie.com. Uh, but until next week, I'm Andy Carlson. She is... Die Murphy. Thank you for listening. Have an awesome week. Uh, if you're going to grill meat, kebabs is the way to go. And plus, put a little Greek yogurt and some mint together. It can just put on everything. It's delicious. That's one thing that the Middle Easterners got right. I almost said terrorist, but that would be terrible. <laughs> all right, good night. The music was created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, check out soundcloud.com forward slash Deeb. We needed to get this right.